but we are a few people who are still stuck in the 80s in our mind when it comes to bangalore and uh, certain things we wish that it was the same as earlier so you know as as a city how do you think the journey has been for bangalore you know if you were to put that into perspective i i don't think anyone imagined that you know it was going to become a very big city till uh, till about uh, the mid 80s i remember the first flooding story in bangalore when uh, you know what is now uh, what is that auditorium near alliance mas gurunanak bhavan right gurunanak bhavan has a basement you know yeah there is yeah. a very big basement there and uh, where um, we used to rehearse plays and all that i've seen the rehearsals of uh, you know, nagamandal actually that shankar nag was doing there in that basement then it got flooded and they closed it so when ramakrishna hegde was there we heard about the first flooding mm-hmm. you know in the miller's uh, old miller's tank area of course the, the miller's tank doesn't exist anymore it has been uh, encroached upon you know, and like many hundreds of lakes actually in and around bangalore there's a city of 1000 lakes at some point of time so if we say you know we should go back to bangalore how far can we go back i we you know i i think the the best of it or whatever the most tolerable bangalore we had was till about the time that uh, i think they were they were regime came i was uh, thinking asam krishna but no no till about till the 70s hmm. yeah, although you know i'm uh, i don't know what you will keep and what you will edit you know devarajars is worshiped in uh, karnataka as a kind of sagacious uh, uh, elder you know somebody who, uh, who is an intellectual chief minister who saw uh, who was ahead of his time and all that but you know he may have been ahead of his time in terms of social engineering because that is what he is most famous for mm-hmm. for his uh, for for his uh, caste interventions and uh, and such and he the how he empowered you know the people of uh, backward and uh, yeah. classes and so on that may be true and uh, who can grudge him that uh, and he certainly was uh, i mean compared to the politicians of the day he was certainly a kind of well read intellectual person but i think uh, he had no clue about uh, environment you know i think the only chief minister who had a who had a good idea of science although he, i don't know whether he did anything about it was j h patel right. who i would rate as the highest intellectual politician that uh, in our times we have, i have seen okay so mm-hmm. j h patel was self, certainly an, a, a really bright thinking you know politician but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they actually implement policies well or they can become very effective political leader well i think by the time he, he actually done a movie about it so <laughs> that's true because by the time he got to power he had become cynical i think i you know right. jh patel but in devrajers's case i would say he was responsible for some other nasty things i think he was he was uh, guilty of encouraging the underworld to be you know to get uh, to get above itself in bangalore okay I mean, cities have greasy on the side, but you yeah. know, this was became really too close to politics. I think he regretted it, you know. Uh, but but that is he, he was that. But the thing that I resent most about Devrajers's regime was that a lot of the lake beds of Bangalore started getting destroyed during his time, and uh, he didn't understand that uh, Bangalore's topography and how it should be managed. right and why the preservation of its waterways and all was important you know for instance we had a um, we had a when the civil and military station was established by the british which is now cantonment yeah they wanted water to be so they found all the bangalore itself is on a hill they found a place that right. was higher yeah. than bangalore and from hesargatta lake for 32 mm. kilometers by gravity flow they got water to bangalore It's an amazing engineering thing right now that that would have been a unesco site if you had preserved it you know hmm. well from his time till later till it came to ramakrishna hegde's time when they destroyed hesargatta lake itself but yeah you know, they broke it and they put bore wells inside and 
whatever you know the basically our politicians and our politics have been callous over the environment because they didn't understand it 